All right, you guys, today we got a very special guest in the house. He's a returning guest to Panda Chop News. First interview was lit and had some controversy. <laughs> Oak is full fifth back in the house, man. What's going on with you, bro? Oh, man, I'm good, man. I'm I'm comfortable. Let's just say I'm comfortable, man, you know. <laughs> then I know it's going to be crazy today. Uh, it's great to have you here, man. Uh, let's get straight into it. Mr. WAC 100. Okay, we know you guys have had a long history already. Um, we spoke about a lot of it during our first interview, but it seemed like it was in a dormant state for a while. What recently happened that caused it to get all stirred up again? So I was on a, um, I was on Clubhouse, and on Clubhouse, you know, um, this dude named this dude named Rundown. He's a bitch. He's a whack meat muncher. He like to suck whack dick, right? And uh, he hosts rooms where it'd be like the people versus. So. He had the people versus Hocus Four Fifth. So in his rooms, what he, what he does is that you come on stage, right? And you get to say your grievances with me. You get to tell me your grievances. I get to respond back and then you leave the stage, right? The rules are, if someone comes to say a personal attack, I have the right to, to tell him, yo, they get out of here. I don't even want to talk to this person. Kick them to the goo. The goo mean the audience. That's what we call that in Clubhouse. That's his rules. He was following his rules. People would come up, say stupid shit. He'd kick, I'd be like, yo, get them out of here. He'll kick them. But when it came to whack, for some reason, the big bad wolf of club, all them niggas scared of him over there. For some reason, they scared of a nigga yelling over the phone. He just let him, he just let him sit there and just start going in. I'm like, yo, get this nigga off my stage. He's not kicking him off. Mind you, I don't have, I'm not a moderator because the thing is, so I don't regulate the stage really. So I, he don't give nobody a moderator badge but himself. So not only did he let Wack come in and disrespect me, Wack started going so crazy that he was getting mad that he started doxing me. Now, if you don't want to know what doxes in it, that's when someone pull up your personal information, like your address, phone numbers, whatever. They could dox your medical records, your, your job, whatever. When someone puts that on the internet, that's considered doxing and it's illegal, right? And it's against the terms of services. Nobody, yeah, you want to ask something? So he was saying it out loud. Like the, the information, your address and everything. Yeah. He was saying it out loud and he put it in the chat. Both. He put it in the chat in the room while we in, right? And then people was reposting my address. He got my address out. And then he started saying, he started saying my baby mother's um phone number and her name. So I just said, yeah, this is her number. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've F that bitch. I did this. I did that. I did that. Right? Then he leaves. He leaves for like, let's say a couple minutes. But I didn't know this, right? When he came back, he's like, yeah, yeah, and I just got off the phone with her. I'm like, seriously? I hit her up like, yo. She's like, yo, this, 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 somebody just called me, threatening me, threatening to kill the kids, trying to extort me, talking about you owe the money. Word? She said it was, she said it was him. She said it sounded like whack 100. I was like, yeah, I'm arguing him right now on the internet. I'm going to hit you back. And then we kept arguing over the end. And I'm like, you doxing me? You threatening a woman? You threatening a woman and her kids right now that got nothing to do with this? Like, we not even together. Like, how you, how you, like, this woman got nothing to do with nothing. Like, why you bothering her life for? Like, this nigga's a bozo. This type of shit he do. But yeah, that's, so that's what sparked it, the beef back up between me and him. You know what I'm saying? But, it, but then this is what got him pissed. This is why he's keep going in because he thought, yeah. Before we get to that though. So, you were just on stage minding your own business, wasn't even talking about him, and then he decided no. to join the room and start going off on you? Or yes. you were talking about him? No, I didn't talk about him. You know, you know what's the whole the whole room is on replays and it's on the internet, so he can't lie. Somebody they they was bringing his name up because they kept saying people would come on stage and be like, Oh, what happened to you? Why you left Clubhouse? I heard whack ran you off a of clubhouse. I'm like, yo, listen. Nobody could run nobody off a of clubhouse. I was like, nobody could stop me from clicking three buttons and opening up a room on clubhouse. I, I stopped making rooms on clubhouse because I'm making money on YouTube. So I go live on YouTube now. Whack had nothing to do with me on clubhouse. And I was like, I'm not talking about a man who's not here. This is what I said. I'm, like, I'm not talking about him. I don't want to talk about whack. So when they come up to talk about whack, I'd be like, yo, kick them down. The replays mm -hmm. is on. Then he, he he winds up coming. They wind up pinging him to the room. And he come on stage with his big mouth start yelling, you, you don't owe me money. You, I said, no, that paperwork is fake. And I'm like, yo, let me tell y'all what really happened in Hocus Life. Because this nigga don't know Hocus Life. And while I'm trying to tell my story, he's just talking over me. I'm like, yo, run down. Get him off the stage, man. Why you got him on my stage? It's my turn to talk. 
Run now was not following his own rules. He just let him keep yelling. No, look that. Uh, 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 uh. That's not even in my character to be yelling on the app. I'm telling him like, yo, I don't even want to make. Why are you trying to make YouTube? Because this, he has people with YouTube channels. They all his people. So every time you see whack one hundred, this this person whack one hundred exposed hoping for fill up. All of those is his people. Those are not regular YouTube people. Like those are all his people with YouTube channels, and he tell them to pull up so he can make a scene, and then they go put it on YouTube. This is what he does. So I'm like, yo, bro, I'm not make. I'm not trying to make YouTube today. Get off my stage. I don't feel like arguing back and forth with you. I don't want to scream on the app. And then that's when he went into doxing me and all that. Wow. So did he, did he, uh, if, correct me if I'm wrong, he shared your mom's address as well, right? Or he yes. started talking about your mom? Yeah, he shared my mom's address and he said he going to put a bag on her head. I said, bro, well, go to Castle Hill if you want. <laughs> the second you step foot in Castle Hill, <laughs> he's a fed, so I got to watch what I say. I got to watch what I say because he's a federal agent, you know. But yeah, like, he, I, <laughs> now I ain't worried about nothing. I ain't worried about nothing. Shout out to French Montana, man. I'm from the Bronx. Nigga, like, come on, man. You ain't doing nothing to nobody. So after this happens, what is your immediate reaction when he does this? So when he does... Are you thinking, I'm going him to Clubhouse? Or like, what are you thinking at this time? I'm tight. Because I'm like, yo, he's doxing me. And then, I, and then I'm mad. I run down. I'm like, yo. Because I'm like, yo, he run down. You sitting on his stage? You letting him dox me? Like, you're sit, you hear what he's saying right now. He's, he's doxing me in real time. You're going to let him put out my personal information? Run down. Can y'all hear Hocus? Oh, I don't hear him. The whole audience said, we hear him. Like, oh, you playing games. Oh, I, I see it was a play. They set me up. Like, it was a play for Clubhouse. You know what I'm saying? And now, now it goes all on YouTube and all that. So I'm like, all right. Wack is known for um, reporting people on the app and getting them kicked off the app. He's known for that. On so, Clubhouse or, or yes, other apps? this is what he does. Yes. He's known for reporting people getting them click, kicked off the app. He's known. This is his specialty. Him and, and Rundown and those type of dudes, this is what they do. So Clubhouse, Terms and Services, their guidelines, if you dock somebody, you get permanently suspended. So I reported the room. I'm being doxxed in here. They kicked him off the app. Now he's running around telling everybody, he, he a snitch. He snitched and got me kicked off the app. Yo, Panda Chop, let me ask you something. If someone makes a fake Panda Chop page, let's say on Instagram, and in that page, it has your address in there or, or your phone number or something, right? Are you going to report that page? Even if it's just a fake page, are you going to report that page to get that page taken down? Yeah, I can't lie. I, I would do that. Everybody does that. When pe people make fake pages of people, they report it because you don't want to, you don't want. So if you, so uh, according to WAC 100, if you report, Anything on the internet, you're a snitch. He's a bozo. He running around with, the, and, and then I was in my room like, ah ha, ah ha, because they was trying, they was calling me a snitch, right? We getting him off the app, so I'm antagonizing him now. I'm like, ah ha, ah ha, yeah, I snitched on you on the internet, ah ha. They taking that clip of me, me antagonizing him, and he, they, they passing it, sending it around to people, saying, look, he admitted to snitching. Y'all still, he's, they sending it around to uh, like other homies and shit like that, street niggas, right? They say, look, he snitched. He snitched. Y'all going to jack him? Oh, I can't respect New York dudes. Look, this dude admitted to snitching. Bro, you can't. Let me tell y'all something out there. For all y'all out there that's listening, you cannot snitch on somebody by reporting a page. Okay? <laughs> that's not snitching, bro. You snitch when you put somebody in jail. And if, and if you're dumb enough, right, that I have to ex even explain that to you, you're just an idiot. But he has bozo minions that... They really, some his minions is really running with this. Like, this dude is just a bozo, bro, and a do lame. You think that, do you think that trying to move the goalpost and try to, like, redefine what it means to be snitching? Yeah, he always moved the goalpost on everything, of course. Um, He definitely trying to redefine it with that alone. He definitely. Like, this, this dude get people clipped off the app all the time. Like, this is what he does. Now that I got you suspended off your app because because without that app, he's not able to harass and terrorize people the way he the way he do. He need that app to do that because they allow it. He can't do that nowhere else. Why hasn't he been reported before or kicked off before? If you if you know if you're saying that this is something that he regularly does, like why is this the first time? Great great question. Because because um people do report him all the time. Clubhouse just don't do nothing about it. 
they violate their own terms of services and guidelines. Now, it was a it was a big surprise to everybody when I got him clipped. That's why it was such a big thing on the app. Whoa, Wack got clipped. It was it was a big. That's why he was mad. That's why he going so hard. Just to answer your question from earlier, that's why he going so hard right now and and putting up fake paperwork of me with child support and fake paperwork this and I'm a snitch here and he's trying to he's trying to dox my case and he put up a post that said my case doesn't even exist. There's no proof of dismissal. Idiot. I was acquitted. Of course, there's no proof of dismissal. My case wasn't dismissed. Dismissed is different from being acquitted. I was found not guilty. Dummy. So you're not going to find no paperwork on my case as if it was a motion or an appeal to dismiss it on the, on appeal. Like you will find on like Pacer, like dot gov. That's when you find people cases. You're not going to find like dude is bugged out. They had a full packed courtroom full of people that see me walk out of there like Tupac when he walked out after getting shot by them cops. I mean, after he shot them cops. Right. I walked out the courtroom like this, not guilty. What are we talking about? And they go Google my name, Hocus Four Fifth, um, 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 or not guilty. And my, I got news articles that come up. This dude said my case didn't exist. I'm not bragging about being in jail. It's just part of my life. I wish I, I never had to go through that experience. It was stressful. Four years on Rikers Island, that was very stressful. But this bozo, he's paying a narrative that my case, my case um, didn't exist. Someone must have told him like, oh, whack. The dude really was in jail. Take that down, because then he took it down. But too late. I got the screenshot. You, you're exposed. Come on, man. So did you, like, immediately think, all right, I'm going to go ahead and report him? Or did you, like, really think about it for a second? Like, do I want to do it or not? Um, No, I didn't immediately think that. Think it. It was really collective of the rap. You know, my, my rap. See, people reported him off the rip. Like, while he was doing it. I'm already arguing people's already reporting him. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Now, I don't want my, my, I have to report this room. My address is being, they got the replays on. Oh. My address is being repeated over and over. Like, I, you know what I mean? I want this taken down. Mm-hmm. Like, like <laughs> that's snitching. Like this thing is, his mind is bugged out. Like the dude is really, but he's an agent though. So it's like, he, he'll do anything and, and paint every, any narrative just to get people on his side. He'll do anything and paint any narrative. So are you getting so, are you getting like threats now or anything like that? Has people like been trying to get at you, like with your personal well, attention? Not, um, I, my my baby mother been getting threats. Like she been, they've been calling her phone because she put out her her phone number. So she getting threats. You know, yeah, they keep yo she, her, her, her private her private um now they calling private. First he called with his number, dummy, stupid dummy. But then then they started calling private, private, private. She don't pick him up no more. But they they. And then they call with a number. They actually called today, again, and threatened her again today. Wow! So it's like, yeah, he was on, he was on, he was on Clubhouse earlier today again, doxing me, because Clubhouse let him back. Now Clubhouse, oh, so they suspended him? Yeah. So after they suspended him for doxing me, like two days later, they gave him his account back. They violated their own terms of services, their own guidelines. Well, he makes them a lot of money, right? Because like he's like all over the app all the time, like. A lot of people go on the app just to listen to him. I guess so. So there was also audio of the phone conversation. He said that, you know, he had with your baby mama and he had recorded it. Um, But it seemed like the whole entire conversation wasn't played. Like the part that was played was like kind of like a nice version. Yeah. So he called twice. This is what he's not going to tell you. And And a dummy is so dumb, like. Obviously, we got the, the the call log, stupid. So he can't lie. He called twice, and he definitely he definitely threatened her. Like I I like the fact that he he going out his way because because I'm glad that you brought this up because now he's telling people, look, he's he's dumb, he's stupid. First of all, this proves that you doxed her. This proves that you called. He like, look, I, I I recorded myself talking to her, and he said I'm gonna press play. He pressed play and he and he plays the conversation that he had with her. He's saying like, oh, Hocus owed me money. Oh, I heard I was told to call you or whatever, whatever he's saying to her, right? But he called twice. He's not gonna tell y'all that. He's just telling, he's just playing one call for y'all. Y'all know he's the spin master. You can't believe him. Of course, he would threaten and then call back and then have that one tucked in his pocket. So when I say that he threatened a woman and kids, his people probably still acting like, damn, you did that? No, look, I press play. This is what happened. Like, of course he gonna tuck that one. Like, it's, come on, this is he played chess, man. This nigga don't play checkers. 
this he played chess. It's so easy to figure him out, man. What was uh, your baby mama's uh, reaction? Was she scared? I mean, she's a civilian. Yeah, like she you know she she don't she don't know what she don't know what's going on. She's not on Clubhouse. She's living her own life, doing her own thing in her own world. Like she's not in my world. Like I'm not even with her. I'm out here trying to do a whole love show for the love of Hocus coming soon. <laughs> for the love of hope is coming soon because they keep trying they keep, they think because I raise money for my show right donations so they over there like so I told them yeah I threw the money in strip club because they over there like he's scammed he's scammed because they don't know what's going on with my show I don't talk about right, it right right but I'm gonna talk about it with you and let you know for the love of hope is coming soon right so it's, it's a love show y'all where you know I'm, this woman trying to get with me you know and I'm gonna um, do my thing but I'm doing a whole love show and they know this I'm not even with the woman. Why are you harassing her? Like, why Like, why would you harass an innocent woman? She ain't, she's not even, in, like, I, she never been on Clubhouse, in none of these rooms, none of that. Like, why are you doing that? And she, um, you said that he threatened the kids too? Like, what did he say? She said that he, th- he threatened to kill her and the kids if, if he don't get his money. And this is over, what, the $5,000 bet? Yeah, yeah, he lost, but since he's whack on, on the app, they all say you lost. Wow. So has she blocked wax number now? Or I guess you said they're calling private now, right? They're calling private now. Um, I don't want to talk too much more about it because I don't want him to dox more, but yeah. Um, so they also used uh, AI, right, to make you say something that you really didn't. I heard the audio, and it's crazy, bro. Like, I knew... This with this type of technology, it was going to come sooner or later, like in certain situations. Uh, the audio sounded like you, but at, at first, but as time went on, you could tell like it wasn't real, like the speech patterns and the tone was off. Yeah, it was choppy. Um, yeah. So the dude rundown that I told you about after, I, you know, I called him all type of bitches and and told him I'm going to run down on him and smack the shit out of him when I see him. Um, he he made he took my voice and put it on A.I., and you know, and act like it was me that called into his room apologizing and shit like that. Yeah, yeah. Like if y'all go listen to it, like this dude, like these, but you know what's so crazy? They don't they think everybody liked them. I got people on the inside of their circle that told me that they was putting my voice on AI to try to make it look like I, I'm I'm a snitch, like talking to police. But then that dropped first. So I was like, oh, that that, that person wasn't lying. So that so right now probably was like, yeah, let me do this first. And now they got some AI that they're going to try to make it look like I'm talking to police or something like that. Like, this, this is what these people do. They lames. They make fo- paint false narratives. Whack paint false narratives. And he he try to implant he try to implant things in people's head to get them on his side. Like, his, his little narratives that he paint. But he's really not smart. He think he is. But when, he's a real, when real dudes, like real niggas like me, call him on his bullshit, that's when he attack you. Like, damn, he's in my way. I got all these other people fooled, but I can't fool Hocus. I got to get him out of here. That's why I don't like So him. you think that it, you think it was a setup from the beginning? Like, how how did you end up on uh, in that room with Rundown? Like, he hit you up? No, Rundown, like I said, he do the, the people versus. So since I came back to the app, every time I jump in a room, dudes be hating on me. Like, somebody come off their mic and, oh, I got a problem with Hocus. I, it, it's, it's like, it's giving groupy, groupy vibes. Like, when I come on there... They all like they want my attention. So I was in um Lou Fax room and it happened a couple of times. Shout out to Lou Fax. He hosts dope rooms over there. So uh uh rundown. So I, I hit up rundown. I was like, yo, rundown. I think we need a people versus hocus because I want to address all the haters in one place so we could get this out the way. Cause every time I run in the room, this goes down. Rundown said, all right, let's do it. So I think that it was a play after I told him that. I think that. Of course, he went to whack. Like, yo, I'm going to do the room with Hocus. Like, you're going to come in a little bit later. And of course. Like, it's so obvious. Of course. Because when I'm telling him, like, yo, because Whack got a side on the app called the 100 side, right? 100 ENT. He got a, a whole bunch of rooms that claim his side, right? A whole bunch of different houses, right? So when I'm like, I didn't know. I never knew that run, Rundown was 100 side, right? There's a side called Mainstream. They they always act like Whack was, I mean, Rundown was Mainstream. So... When I was telling Rundown, yo, get this thing off my stage, he he said it. He said, he said, nigga, Rundown ain't kicking me off this stage. This 100 side. I said, oh, Rundown, you're not going to kick him off? He didn't never kick him off. I'm like, oh. So obviously it was a play, bro. Obviously. And I fell for it. You know what I'm saying? 
I should have never trusted Rundown. I thought he was more of a stand up dude just by meeting him on the app. I, I never seen him do nothing like that. But when it comes to whack, I don't know what's wrong. I don't know what kind of power he got over these niggas. But whack is pussy. Like he's never gonna do. He's never gonna hurt nobody. He's just barking. He's not gonna do nothing. I'm gonna let you. I know you're probably gonna ask a question about the fight. I'm gonna let you get into that. So, yeah. Yeah. I was I was surprised to see you back on the app because uh, during our last interview, you were saying that Clubhouse has like the dumbest people in the world on there. So I was surprised to see you go back to that. And there's a a lot of toxicity on the app. Right. But if you ask anybody, right, if you ask anybody that be in my spaces, they're going to tell you Hocus got the best space on there because my room is not full of the toxicity. I mean, it happens, but we, we uh, you can't control someone coming off their mic and saying something stupid. The first day I went back on the app, right, the first day, some dude jumped on the stage. You dumb niggas in here. Kicked them off the stage. Like, you can't control. I was like, look at this. The first day I get back. Here go this, like, you know, the, the toxicity that you're talking about. But I only went back, and I, and I only went back for um for one day a week. I said, okay, my people was begging me to come back. I mean, it took me three months. Think about it. I wasn't, I'm doing good over on YouTube. I don't need to go over there. My people was begging, like, yo, come back. Yo, give us some one room. Get, come on, bro. Like, because they like the app. So I'm like, cause like a lot of them, you know, people who stay where they, where they like. Some people don't come to YouTube. So I said, you know what? I'm going to give y'all one, one day a week on Sundays. I'm going to host a room. That's it. I'm going to host a room one day a week. But eventually, I'm going to even stop that. But I'm going to give y'all that because y'all asking me. That's why I went back to the app. The only reason. Because my people begged me to come back. I don't I don't need Clubhouse. I don't. I'm doing too good over here on YouTube. You know what this YouTube money like. Come on, Panda. Don't <laughs> Tell them this YouTube money different, man. <laughs> you know what this YouTube money like. <laughs> Who ended up suggesting the celebrity boxing match? Well, I, I went online and said I wanted to fight him. You know what I mean? Because I got I'm just tired of the docs and he just kept po- I'm like, yo. At the end of the day, we on the internet beefing. I'm I'm look, I'm a smart man. I'm not gonna be beefing with you on the internet then really go kill you. We both know that that's not gonna happen. We both grown men, we not kids. But we men. Let's let's fight. Let's fight. Like, let's fight. And then let's take the money and give it to charity. So when I when I made my video saying I wanted to fight him, celebrity boxing called me, and um I thought it was a prank call because you know he giving out numbers and I really was cursing him out like yo who the fuck is this like yo y'all niggas pranking my phone they was like no 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 hocus chill like this is really celebrity boxing. Um we see that you want to fight Rack one hundred we uh we want to offer you a hundred thousand and we want to offer him a hundred thousand and you know it, do you really want to fight him or is this just for content. I said, hell no. I told him what he did as far as saying he threatening my mother, my kids, my baby moms, me and, and all the doxing and putting out the addresses and stuff. I said, hell no. I really want to fight him. I want to punch some craters in his face. I said, I don't even care about the money. I just want to fight him. I didn't ask them for no money. They came to me and offered me $100,000. So I said, okay, I accept. They hit him up. I ain't going to empower my op and help him make $100,000. You help me. You making a hundred thousand? You making a hundred thousand too? So that's not helping me. Like you, you're not doing me a favor. You're not doing me a favor by taking this fight. Come beat. You got a problem with me? You jumped on my stage. You right, jumped on you, my stage. And you ended up releasing text messages between you and Wack, and he was saying he doesn't move for anything less than five mil. And you suggested that you guys could box for charity, right? Yeah, I said I told him that. Yeah, I told him, I told him like, yo, we could give the money to charity of your liking. No, I'm gonna give it to my charity. I'm not gonna let him pick my charity. But you give yours to <laughs> charity. We could both sign it, sign it, give it to charity. And then I told him, okay, look, you talking about empowering me? I I give you my hundred k now. Two hundred k is yours, and I take zero, and I put that on my I put that on my kid's life. I will sign the contract and let the world see. Hocus four fifth purse. For the for the match zero, whack 200,000. 200, Damon, the, um, the CEO of of Celebrity Boxing, came in on my on my stage at Clubhouse. I interviewed him. I brought him in just so the world can see, and he and he said it, like yeah, I got I got this money for y'all. I called you, Hocus. You didn't reach out to us because I wanted people to know, like I'm because he said I'm clout chasing. I'm not clout chasing. I want to fight you. You you know what's so crazy though? They they such bozos. You violated. 
Like, you know you violating me right now. Put out my address, call my baby mom, harassing her, threatening my kids, threatening my moms. That's violation. Now, my reaction is I want to fight. I'm clout chasing. Like, does that make sense, bro? The, if my reaction is I want to fight and punch some craters, some more craters in his face, punch some more potholes in that pothole face. And you say I'm clout chasing. I'm the clout, Panda. He's soft. He's not the gangster that people respect. I'm the nigga that got the respect. I'm the nigga who, 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 who fought cases facing life in prison, went to trial and beat it. But you hang with 6ix9ine, a nigga who snitched on all his people. I'm the nigga who went to trial. I'm, I'm, the, I'm the clout. I'm the real. If I get knocked out, he, he looks bigger. He looks like, yeah, I'm whack. I told y'all I knocked out a big blood from the East Coast. He looks bigger. If I knock him out, people going to be like, damn, man, Hulk. I mean, yeah, they're going to be happy, but it's not going to be as big. It's going to be like, Hulk not whack out, but we all know whack was pussy anyway. He only, he only, had a, he only um, beat up two white boys in the parking lot. Like, and he sucker punched one of them. One of them got sucker punched. The other one, one of them didn't even want to fight. So how was he, how was, how am I clout chasing? He jumped on run down stage. That's why you brought that up earlier. He jumped on the stage, Panda. He didn't have to do that. Was that not clout chasing? Why? Because he's whack? Y'all some whack dick riders out there, man. That nigga pussy, he's soft. So you want to fight him that bad that you're going to give up a hundred thousand dollars, Hocus? Yes. Yes. He can keep the money. I, I, yes, he can keep the money. Well, he and he's like, well, no, oh, we, oh, no, no publicity. Let's do this in a back in a back alley, bare knuckle. Bro, first of all, you're not gonna put you're not gonna pull up anywhere in New York. You're not gonna come to Atlanta and fight me. You the, the nigga sent word to my people that he want me to pull up to LA and go in a backyard somewhere in LA, in his home, in his territory, in his backyard. What do I look stupid, bro? Why do I look stupid? Like you a greasy, grimy dude. You're not a dude to trust. No, you publicly disrespected me. You publicly said you was going to put a bag on my mother's head. You publicly gave out my baby mama phone number and called her and played the recording on a public platform. You publicly jumped on run down stage and disrespected me. So let's publicly show niggas who the real tough guy is because you was talking real tough on the stage. So why you can't publicly show everybody who the tough guy is? Why you want to do it in a dark alley where nobody can see? So you think that if you went to L.A., it would not be an honorable fight? You think that they going to line you up? Bro, they line me up on Clubhouse. They're going to try because I got I got people out there in L.A. I got people right. out there in L.A. They're going to try. They're going to try, but it, it's not going to work. Hell, they ain't going to lie. Come on, I got people out here, and, and, and I will be out there soon. I'm going to be in L.A. soon. And, a, and, a, and one of the people that I, I rock with hard, they all scared of him. He's definitely scared of him. But I'm not going to put that man name out there because niggas don't want their name on YouTube. Real niggas, street niggas don't want their name all over YouTube. Because he was asking, who, who, who you going to come out here with? I'll be waiting. Who you going to come out? I'm not, I'm not going to tell you, bro, because all you're going to do is go say their name on YouTube. Nobody wants their name on I to, Yo, Panda, the first time, right, I told you the story of how we, um, you know, when we first started beefing our last interview, bro, I told him, please don't. I got the proof in my phone. I texted him and called him and told him, please don't mention my name no more. Even shouting me out in a good way. Because he used to be like, yo, big up the whole. I said, yo, just don't mention my name no more at all. You know, I don't, you know, ain't no issues. You know, I just don't like the way you're moving. And he said, all right, brother, you know, I respect that brother, this, this, and that. So I've been told that dude, stop mentioning my name. I don't want my name all over YouTube in your mouth. Nobody, nobody wants to be on YouTube arguing with Wack 100. Let's settle the score right now. You got an issue with me. You said I owe you $5,000. Now, you're looking like a pussy because you got the chance to make $200,000. Forget $5,000. You got the chance to make $200,000, win, lose, or draw. Panda. Three two-minute rounds. Three, three rounds. Three, that's it? Just three rounds. $200,000 wow. for six minutes, Panda. He's turning down $200,000 for six minutes. Bro. I don't, care, I don't care how much money he got. Oh, I'm already a millionaire, which I don't believe you. But I don't care how much money he got. He, he's a businessman. 
I will say that. Nigga, 200000 for six minutes, anybody's going to go get that. That, he, that shows you he's really scared of me. All that barking on the internet is really fair being released so people don't think that he's scared. That nigga's scared of me, bro. It's obvious. Do you think, do you think that he would be willing to do it privately, though? Like a real one-on-one? Like he doesn't want people to see it? He said he will, but he won't because he's not going to meet up with me nowhere. We, 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 he's not. The only way he would he would do it if it's in his backyard. He will not. That nigga ain't going to come. I can say, let's go to Utah. He, he going to be scared to go to Utah. I can say, let's go to Omaha. He's going to be scared. Like, he's not going to meet up with me nowhere. I promise you. He's not going it, to. There's no way that he's going to meet up with me. Unless it's in his backyard. And would you be willing to go do it in his backyard if you had your people with you? Now you said that you got some people in LA, right? Bro, that's the no. Why why would I go to his backyard? Why why am I fighting under his terms? Like, like th- that doesn't even make no sense. We have the that's chance a- to show the world how men can handle business. Forget the money. This ain't about the money, Pen. I Obviously, it's not about the money. He's making about the money. Okay, cool. I don't want no money. We have the chance to show the world how men handle their differences. Why are you running from that? Like, that should be the question. Whether I would go or not, it's not even a question. We have a chance to do it in a neutral place. And then we know, we know, we know that this place is neutral. Why he won't do it? Soft. Soft. Pussy. So even Raz B from B2K got involved, right? And then like whack went at Raz saying, Don't make me expose you. Yeah, um, yo, shout out to Raz B, man. Raz B, you know, Raz, Raz called me, you know, that morning, um, and was just like, yo, I see what's going on with you and whack. You know, he he fucked with both of us. So he was just being a friend to both of us, like, yo, y'all just go on the ring, get it over with, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Y'all both good brothers. And this dude is such a demon. I ain't taking no type of way. This dude is such a demon that he going to he going to put that post up about Rasby. You know, I'm not even going to repeat it. You know, he disrespected Rasby. And that's whack. That goes to show you his character. I don't even know why why, why Raz will remain his friend after that. Like this dude character is just so flawed and I don't know why people believe anything he say. Yeah, that was uh that's pretty crazy when I saw that post, man. Did you talk with Raz after the fact? Um, no, I didn't talk with Raz after he did that. No, I didn't talk to him. So Wack ended up putting out uh, paperwork on you, right? And you said it's doctored. No, he he put out some some child support paperwork. So that that's what the bet was out was was that he said that I said that Nick he because he was running around the app saying that um I went to jail for child support and I had a warrant for child support and I went to jail. So I so that's what the bet was about. I ain't never I ain't never go to jail for child support. Never. So he said, oh, bet me, bet me. I bet you you went to jail. You got a warrant for child support. I said, no, I don't. In order to have a warrant, you got to go to jail. Right? So he's saying, right. I, he said, I, I, it's, it's on the internet and I played it for them. He said, I went to jail. That's what the bet was. So then he, he comes with some paper that says, um, I even send you the paper. It just it, it does got um my mom's address on there. If you could block that out. But I'll even send you the paper. No, I saw it. I saw that you you uh you you were talking about it, and it said it said warrant on one side, and it said bail on the other side. So you were saying that like it's not even real paperwork. How how do you get how do you get a warrant and 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 then they they um give you bail at the same time? How do you get a warrant right? If a warrant is put out on you, there's no bail already docked up for a warrant. It's stupid. You got to go to jail, look at a judge, and the judge give you bail. So warrant and bail is on the same paper. So it's war- it says warrant, and then it says bail, and it got a number under bail. And then if you go pull up the docket number, the warrant number that's on there, it don't exist. It never existed. It never existed in the child support database, in the warrant data. It never existed. Multiple people done searched it, looked it up. Holy shit. He was lying. I said, I told y'all. Why y'all believe him all the time? Why do people believe Wack 100? I have no idea. His whole persona is a fake, is a lie. Everything he says is a lie. Like this guy will say anything out of his mouth for shock value. He learned from 6ix9ine. He actually took his took his strategy 
and brought it to um Clubhouse and the internet too. He so lies about everything. The people that are following Whack though, do you think they're not looking it up? No, <laughs> they're with him. Whack Whack hosts meetings with them and to run narratives. What are you talking? They. Bro, he, they put out the fake paperwork on Jim Jones. The paperwork was paperwork from London, from the UK. But they wrote Jim Jones' name in there. What they all backed it? it. No matter what Wack say, they're going to push it because they think that Wack is going to do something for them one day. Okay, so that's what you think it is. That's what you think that they're going to get money somehow with Wack so bro, they don't I care. I know that's what it is, bro. I know. Wack done flipped on so many people that he's stupid. The people that he flipped on come talks to me. Like, I know what, how they hold their meetings. I know how they set up plays against people. Like, the, he done flipped on so many people, bro. He Like, in his own camp, I'm talking about. You know how many conversations I had with people that he done flipped on in his own camp? Like, that nigga really a bozo, yo. He really hating on you, Hope. He really got it out for you. That nigga want to be you. I'm telling you. He said, yo, we got to take down a rabbit hole. And if I'm lying, he has a whole video on YouTube where he say he was in his room. So this is public. Operation take down the rabbit hole, y'all. Now it's Operation take down the rabbit hole. You think he freestyled it that day? Or the person who told me before that he was going to try to take my, down the rabbit hole is right. They've been told me. His own people. Yo, he hating on you. You do your numbers every night. He was like, yo, that nigga got bots. I don't even know how to buy bots. Now he's saying now he's saying it publicly, but his people's been told me he was saying this behind the scenes. He's saying that I buy bots to get people in my room. He said, I knew he had bots in his room when it's five in the morning and it's five, six hundred people in there. There's no way. Mm, that goes to show you the hate. Because I ain't never buy no bots. Oh, I'm doing good. I just think I'm just doing regular shit. But obviously, what I'm doing is phenomenal on that app. I'm doing so phenomenal that the app itself considered me an elite creator. They gave me that name. They told me that, and I have the proof, but you know, I don't need to show that. I need to prove that I act think I'm an elite creator. So what? Who cares? Okay. I'm an elite creator. whoop de doo Woo. Right? I ain't getting paid for being an elite creator on the app. All right. So who really cares, right? But I'm just saying that to prove a point about whack, how he hates on that. He's mad. If he can't control you on that app, he wants to dominate the whole app. He goes at you. Everybody noticed that's on there. So, like, bro, I know what I'm talking about. I don't, I don't think I'm not speculating. I know. Everything that I'm saying is true. I don't lie. He lies. He run narratives. I don't do that. So the people that are coming to you, are they celebrities themselves or just like the regular people that follow him? No, just like people that follow him, people that used to be in his room. It's so crazy because some of them even go back, but I don't say nothing. I just be like, you know, for what? I don't blow them up. Yeah. They even go back to his rooms and start like being part of his clique again. You know, you know, what is a hell of a drug. Right. So so you think that it's just for attention? Like, is the attention to help bring awareness to his businesses in that way? Or what is the whole reason for doing all of it? It's agent vibes, bro. <laughs> I, I got a phone call um today from a friend and they they called me because they reached out to one of their friends who is a um Ex FBI employee. They're not they're ex FBI employee, not an agent, but an employee with the FBI. I won't say uh what they did or, or what they um you know job description is. But my friend reached out to their friend because and then when they was asking about him, and, they, and my friend asked their friend, Do you want is okay if we call him and tell him because whack is baiting him? And so they called me, and in and a long story short. They told me that everybody knows this in them offices that WAC 100 is working like for the federal government. Everybody knows this like to, to them. She said, she said, they, we all know this. Listen, you know, of course, don't put, you know, if I say, I'm not going to say no name. I, I asked them, is it OK for me to tell my people just not say who? They was like, yes, it's OK. But please beg me, please leave him alone. He's baiting you. He is baiting you. Leave him alone. When you see people that do, like Charleston White, when he do this type of stuff, they are working with the federal government. See, Charleston White don't lie about it, though. See, that's the thing. He's doing exactly what Charleston White is doing. And Charleston White is tell, uh, will tell you, yeah, I work with the FBI. Yeah, I just got the phone with um, Homeland Security and I didn't told on this person, that person. Yeah, he, Charleston White is honest. He's doing the same thing. But y'all going to say that I'm lying. I don't got nothing to prove to nobody no more, bro. Like, that dude is working, bro. Like, you know, they, I got that phone call today and that's, it is what it is. The nigga's working. So are we talking a literal undercover agent or just an informant? 
Wow, I think it could be both. On certain issues, it could be an undercover agent, you know, like in an informant also. So like, um, I didn't, I didn't get that, that that deep into the conversation on exactly what did he take down, what did he tell on, you know. The conversation was just more about telling me leave him alone because he is, you know, um, you know, been working with the federal government. But I, I would believe maybe a piece of both, maybe on call when they, whenever they need him, you know, get close to this person, get close to that person. I don't know. All I know is that they say he was working. So do you think that this is a part of like hip hop police or or just being a plant or what? Yeah. Um, well, hip hop police. I I, won't, I don't know if it's a part of hip hop police, but I think it's a part of you know having people on the inside and infiltrate in hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Like, of course, like yes. I, come on, his best friend is six nine. Of course, like why is it so hard to believe that whack? Because he screamed on Paru, on Paru. Just because he screamed on Paru, like shout out to the real Paru too. I'm not dissing Paru. I'm just making a mockery of how he said because he's a bozo. I don't even consider him Paru. I think it's not blood. He's not gangster. None of that. He's an agent. So I'm just making fun of him. Shout out to the real Pyrus. But they think because he got a bark. And he he he's from the West Coast and he claimed blood and he like and he disrespect people. People, prominent figures, people that got respect in the street, he'll disres- he'll disrespect anybody. So people think, oh, Rack is tough, man. He crazy, man. And the whole time, he doing what Charleston White doing. He's working. What about the people from his hood that do co-sign him? People in the streets that say that he is official. You think that, one, you think that one show point me he did? He did show me that panda. Who, who said that? <laughs> Who co-signed him and say he official? Reggie Wright Jr. He's a cop! (laughs) (laughs) Reggie Wright Jr. is a real cop, though. Like, you just proved my point. Former cop that took security, that worked for Death Row, head of Death Row, right? He's a cop, though. He's a real-life cop, though. Like, it's not... Then this is not... For people that don't know who Reggie Wright is, he's actually Compton PD. Like he's real a real cop, okay? Was was before he went to death row, right? He was uh, <laughs> nigga. Once a cop, always a cop. What are we talking about here? Once a cop, always a cop. And he was working, he was still working in the police force when he was with death row. I think for a little while, but but I mean <sighs> Reggie Wright is talk- a cop, man. We we uh, okay, I give you that. If Reggie Wright said whack is official, you just proved my point. Tell me who else. I actually speak to people from Wack Hood. They called me, and this is on my kid's life. They told me that he got caught with um transsexuals before. They told me that he gets he, he, they call they call him slap head out there because he get every time the sixties see him, they slap him beside his head. Every time the sixties see him, they catch him anywhere. They slap him beside his head. Is they told me that. Were talking, is that what you were talking about? Because I heard some audio or some you saying that some Crips and slapped him upside his head or something like that. I forgot. Yeah, every time them 60s see him anywhere, they slap him on his head. See, they don't do it for clout. They're not trying to record him. It's really up. Like, you really disrespecting it. Like, you you like you like disrespected an official real one. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it's up. Every time they see him, they beat him up. Everybody know that. The streets talk. He running out here getting ragged. Like, he's not out here as a gangster on the street. He's just on the internet with a big bark. You don't never see him come talk about it. Yeah, I ran into new today, the 60s in it. You don't even see him. Come on, man. Because he know they ain't on the internet playing with him. Come on. I spoke to people from his neighborhood. They said they told me about him, man. He's not official. People from LA call me all the time. Yo, hope we respect you. Leave him alone. He's yo, it was like, I don't know how y'all look at him over there. He's nobody out here. He's not that. That's pure. You just gotta imagine six nine. That's all you gotta imagine when you imagine whack. We all knew when, even when six nine was with Treyway, we all knew them who what the fucking muscle was. Everybody know six nine was the little rainbow head, little punk. Yo, yo, yo. just because he got a lot loud bark, and it's and it wound up showing itself. Look, he look what he did. Like whack is no different, no different. He ain't never put in no work. He never put no real pain in in the street. Out there. He never put in no pain, man. I ran nine prison yards. Come on, bro. We supposed to believe you ran nine prison yards? Like, like, how, yo, how do people fall for this? Uh? Like, New Yorkers, we don't. It's it's hard to fool a New Yorker. That because you know because we got some of the, the most 
we grew up with some of the most slick talking dope fiends in the world. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? Like, so that slick talking that he be doing, I re- it ain't even slick talking. It just, you could just, we know a fraud when we see one. And they come up to me talking, yeah, I ran nine prison yards, man. Not, he actually say this. There's, there's footage out there. He ran nine prison yards. <laughs> Yo, this shit is crazy, man. What is the, the politics like for him when he, go, he goes to New York? Even though he's a blood and then, you know, or he's Pyru, but you know what I mean? Like, can you tell me when the last time you seen him in New York? Rest in peace to K Slate. K Slate was a, K, that's how we met through K Slate. Right, right, we right. Before, yeah. Said yeah. Last interview. Right, I said that the last interview. Um, He didn't He didn't go to K Slate funeral or he didn't go to K Slate, um, the street signing thing. Why you didn't go to New York? If K State was your, come on, bro. He ain't going. He, he didn't. He didn't talk about so many people. He's not going to New York. And if you do go, hit me up and say I'm on my way over there, and I'll be on my way too. I I'll meet. I'll meet you anywhere in New York. Anybody. I'll meet you in anybody backyard in New York. Anybody's. So people in New York. Definitely feel like he's always trying to make New York look bad then, right? Yeah, that's all he's trying to do. He attacked New York people to try to make them look bad. And like he run narratives, fake narratives, and he makes stuff up. And then he be catching some people though, some folios. Like I heard it with some New York dudes in his room the other day when he was talking about me. This is yesterday, actually. And he's, he's trying to convince them that I'm a rat because I, because I got him off the application. And some of them dudes are, yeah, I'm from New York. I don't feel that, man. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, you was right, whack. You was. I'm like, yo, y'all, I like, seriously, he's right. I always be like, yo, these people, man. I, he's right. I'm a rat because I got him off an app, but he's gonna go hang out with six nine later. Yo, y'all. <laughs> what is the the motive? To make New York look bad for him, then. Of course, the motive is to make New York look terrible. I know. So just because he doesn't like New York or what, what, what is the reason? Yeah, I think he don't like New York. And I think that he want to trick New York dudes, you know, out the streets. I don't know, bro. I don't know what's going on in that man's head. <laughs> he's a de- he's, a, he's a demon. You got a lot of people over in New York, though. Like, he's cool with Joe. He's cool with, you know, like a, a lot of people in New York, though. What Joe? Fat Joe. He ain't cool with Joe. He tried. Listen, man, he, he, he tried to diss Joe. Then he apologized and say, nah, Joe was a real dude. You know, we had dinner one time. Joe paid the whole bill, some shit like that. And then he tried to diss Joe again. Like, he's a, he's a flip-flopper. The same thing with me. He beefed with me. Then he apologized to me. And then he started beefing with me again. Same thing. When did he diss Joe again? What do you mean? He did. Um, oh, Man, he got so much stuff on YouTube. He dissed Joe again. He uh, What did he say? He, like... He was talking shit about the, you know, the, 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 the movie, the pun movie and stuff that he had. He, I forgot exactly what he said, but I remember the time around that time. We was we was all like, look at him. He dissed Joe. Then he then he was. You don't remember the first time he dissed Joe? Well, I remember the Liza Rio situation where he said, um, "I don't got to talk to Fat Joe about shit." He said, "You know, you you did that to the kids and the family. You had them in the shelter and everything." And then the Rolling Loud video where he said that. You know, I want to kill the narrative that there's a problem between me and Joe. Because he knew he had to see him. Joe was my peoples or something like that. And uh, KR, all that stuff. Because he knew he had to see Joe. That's why. Because at the end of the day, he know at the end of the day, the people Joe run with would have went in his mouth. He knew he had to see him. That's why he did that. You don't think that uh, that whack got people too? You don't think he deep like that? He got the feds. No, he ain't got nobody that's gonna rock, rock with him like that, man. He, any anybody anybody could, could pull some dummies up to, to go go rock with them and go out. He, I mean, he got a couple dollars. He probably paid. Yeah, but he ain't got. He ain't got. Uh, nah, I don't think he got no real gangsters that's gonna ride out with him. Like, I'm not saying that he don't be around real gangsters, but I think they know what he do, and I don't think they really gonna put their life on the line for him. Joe got. Loyal, loyal um, brothers, you know, official street dudes that's going to ride out for him. I don't think he has that. I don't think Wack 100 has that. No, I don't. What about the, the parties that are, are, you know, in the middle? Like Game, his artist, is really cool with Joe. 
that's what make it bad. Like he, you know, he he he. I'm not gonna say he messes up relationships, but he he sour relationships by doing what he doing. He don't care about nobody but himself, obviously. So you really think that Wack is scared of Joe and his people? I, I think that Wack does it all for the internet. Like I think that. I'm not, like like so like you said you asked me do I think he's scared I think that um if he run into them he'll be scared like you know what I'm saying like uh you know I, I, he's scared to fight me yeah I would say that obviously it's obvious he's scared to fight me you know all them excuses I didn't got rid of all the excuses get everything out the way no money for me all for you like so yeah I think that if he run into them he'll be scared after after yeah I think he was scared to run into them at Rolling Loud after he um, said saying that disrespectful stuff. He said that uh, Pistol Pete is his family. He says like that's my brother. So I don't know they their relationship. Be... They probably got a relationship. I don't know their relationship. So how did uh, Troy Av get into all of this? You said that he's a snitch, just like Six Nine, and he he rolls with Wack. Well, I'm not saying he rolled with Wack. Wack also co-signed Troy Av and what he did. Come on, but look, they do business this. together though. They doing business huh? together. They do business oh, wow. together. I didn't even know that. See, look, why he why he always want to pick the New York rats to do business with? But um, Troy Ave, Troy Ave, like so he added Troy Ave in a post with me, and Troy Ave, you know, commented and, and you know try to put clown New York niggas like try to play me. I, I'm a Troy Ave just mad because you know when you know he's a rat and and I went in on him and did a video about it. You told and I told I did a video about what you did. Why are you mad, bro? Why are you mad? I did a video about what you did. You went on the stand and pointed that man out. I did a video about it. It's it's it's, it's news. So the white man on Fox Five could talk about it, but I can't. It's crazy. So what do you think about the whole narrative that is being pushed? Like the streets is a myth. The way that he said that. Um, I don't agree that the streets is a myth. Um, because you know, just people, you know. I really, I really went to jail with facing life in prison because of the streets. Um, there's people really dying in the streets. There's people really on hard drugs. There's families being broken every day in the streets. So it's not a myth. Well, I think that he's referring to this era. In this era, how people have like removed themselves a little more from the codes. Yeah, I think that that's I think that's true. People remove themselves from the cold. There's a lot of integrity going from the streets. I think that there's a lot of double standards, and I also think that like um, dudes don't people uh so do selective, you know um, you know picking on what they choose to be official and non-official. Like you know, like it's it's not official. It's, it's streets kind of bugged out, right? Because you could go you could go rob your man, right? And it's like, you know, niggas will still jack you. But if you go snitch on your man, that's not okay. Like, like to me, I think both warrant for you to be exiled. And I'm not talking, about, I didn't say executed, I said exiled. <laughs> so make sure FBI, you know, this is, what, this is my opinion about something. I'm not calling for nobody to be, ex- yeah, because they'll take your words and flip it. So, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, it's, it's just like, so it is kind of like messed up. Like dudes, with that, jack dudes were doing some grimy shit. And they'll pick and choose what they feel to be grimy or not. Dudes be still be running around with certain people that they know snitched. And streets is washed. It's washed. It's not a myth. Maybe he's using the wrong word. You know, maybe he's using the wrong word by the streets is a myth. But it's definitely washed. Like, you know. I think you made a, a good point though, that it's selective. Right? Like that's a good, that's a good word to use because it's like people it's almost like the apps how they apply the community guidelines when they choose to when they want to it seems like that's kind of like how things are done now where um especially in hip hop when it comes to the street code yeah yeah it's it's, def- it's definitely selective when when they want to so but the funny thing about it is is so he's so whack is saying this but it's selective with him he want people when he says Oh, my, my business in the building, my business in the building, and I do with 6 9 and my business with Troy Ave, I do business with snitches, they ain't got nothing to do with my street, street, da 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 da, da, da. So, let's take it to an yeah, app. Yeah, Our business on the app ain't got nothing to do with street shit. I get you kicked off an app, what they got to do with the streets? Selective, right? Even he's selective. Like, come on, man. Yeah, because he says that he doesn't talk to, to 6 9 about his street politics, his street business. It's only like the business in the industry. 
he ain't got no street business. He's lying. He's in, he, he not even in the streets, man. Like, he ain't got no street business. That nigga's capping, man. So how well did you know WAC before there were issues? I know that you knew him through um, through K-Slay and that you guys kind of built a relationship from there. But, like, was it to a point that you really trusted him and that you you believed, Hell like, no. character? Man, one of the first times I ever spoke to him, probably the second, third time, he was he was disrespecting Nipsey, calling Nipsey. He didn't he didn't he didn't say nothing about Nipsey being gay. He said he told me that Nipsey um that it was paperwork on Nipsey and he's the one keeping it from going out. That uh Nipsey and them people, whoever his people is, they paying they paying some I forgot amount of money, a certain amount of money weekly for that paperwork to go don't go out about Nipsey to protect his name. That's what he told me. Like, and I was on a three way with K Slay. K Slay tried to stop him. And he said, man, Hocus ain't going to say nothing, man. He a real nigga. And the only reason why I'm saying something right now is because it already came out when, when, when Hassan Campbell put out the audio. But I, So when Hassan Campbell put out the audio with him talking all that stuff, I wasn't surprised because I didn't even know him like that. And he was running his mouth telling me stuff about Nipsey. But he told Hassan Campbell some, something about Nipsey being gay. Like, how did the story flip from you told me about him being a rat and now he, he's gay? What that go to tell you? This dude be lying. He makes stuff up. He makes stuff up as he go along. Nipsey ain't no Nipsey ain't do no gay shit. Y'all, you believe him that Nipsey did? Come on, man. He make it up as he go along. Come on, man. He put out fake paperwork. Like, come on, y'all. Come on, world. Come on, right, clubhouse. Bro. Clubhouse bozos. Come on. Y'all really be I'm believing gonna, this nigga? I'm going to play devil's advocate, okay? Because you said that he works with the feds. So if he works with the feds, wouldn't he have better skills at creating paperwork that resembles real paperwork, though? He didn't create the paperwork with Jim Jones. He um um that was that was created by somebody else, and they gave it them, and he pushed it just without without caring because he just you know I don't think I don't people think he's smarter than what I don't think he's that smart. So I understand what you're saying. Would it be? I don't think the Fed, the Feds is not gonna sit down with him and help him create pa- paperwork. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think the Feds work like that. They're gonna use them when they need them. I don't think he. I don't think he got that much pull. Hey, yo, yeah, yeah. I want to sit down and make fake paperwork about Hocus. Like, that's not something that the Feds will do. So you're saying he don't got a paperwork guy that he just calls from the office or something like that? And be no, like, no. They, they I, I think he got a bunch of fake minions. That he probably give a hundred dollars to to create paperwork and stuff like that. So you're saying that as soon as the whole situation with Nipsey happened, when he had that conversation with you, you already started looking at him differently. Of course, he on the phone with an East Coast nigga dissing Nip. What well, uh, first thing I thought was, well, oh, he must, well, he's a blood, and he well, he ain't he not really in real blood, but at that time, I'm thinking oh, he's a blood and Nip a crypt, so maybe that's why he, you know, what I'm saying he acting like this right now. Cause I didn't believe it, you know. I didn't believe that Nip was a. We, even though he's he's saying it, you know, I didn't really know him like that at the time. I didn't believe Nip was a rat. I didn't believe that. First, we only hearing this from you. You got you ever notice? You got to watch out for the guy who always in the middle of something. He had he 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 brought he um bribed Kanye with the second tape. Remember the second tape with Kim and Ray J. He had that. He's the one who found the um. He's the one who had De La Hoya um, sex tape. He had, he he bribed him with that. Now you got this Nipsey. You got the Nipsey rap paper. He finds this person rap paper. You got the Nipsey hustle sex tape. Like, why is he the guy with everybody sex tape? Well, don't forget. Don't forget. Because he said that he had Benzino's tape, too. That's what I'm <laughs> saying. He Why why do you end up with everybody's sex tape? Well, Guys, wh- weird, man. You know, you I know you know about. You need to interview Mika. You know who Mika who? is? Mika, his ex girl, the one that put the three fingers in his butt. Bro, you. <laughs> you... No, nah, you're trying to give me some real trouble now. <laughs> you don't know about this? Are you talking about the one that took the picture? Yeah. Of, like... you, you, know, you never seen her interview where she told the story that she, nah, that she nah, put three nah. fingers in his butt and he said, make a command motion like this? Bro, it's on it's on my page. I'm I'm, I'm gonna send it to your DM. It's on my page. <laughs> you crazy, man. <laughs> Bro, I'm telling Mika said Mika told everybody, and you know what's crazy? He never denied it. What he did was he sent CPS to her house. That's sending police, and he admitted that, but he's calling me a snitch. That's police shit. 
He admitted to sending CPS to this girl house. And he never denied uh, the three fingers. What about this other thing, okay? Because when I interviewed Reggie Wright Jr., okay, he said that he's never known uh, whack to lie about things, maybe exaggerate a little bit, but not lie, not full-blown lie. That's his man, man. They both police. <laughs> oh, it's so no. easy. They both police, man. That's his man. Why are we going to listen to... He, he, yo, whack lies about everything. I mean, literally, like, literally everything. Come on, Panda. You got to be smarter than that, man. You can't be listening to no fucking Reggie right anyway, man. Shout out to Reggie Wright. <laughs> what you got against Reggie Wright Jr., man? You think he'd be lying? Man, listen. Biggie and Tupac dead. All them niggas got something to do with that shit somehow, some way. Fuck them niggas, man. Real talk. All right. So, Rest in peace, Big and Pop. Fuck all them niggas who had something to do with any of their deaths. So what's the situation that he's talking about with uh, mob ties? He's saying that you you were you were affiliated, then you you denounced your affiliation, and then you said that oh WAC one hundred was right about. I never said he was right about nothing. I never said he was right about nothing. I just said you know what I should have just minded my business about everything, because when he did went against when he was when he did the um when he was acting like he was protecting his lady because he again how he ended up with the tape <laughs> again he had the Larry Hoover um he had the lady who had the Larry Hoover tape and. Larry Hoover wanted that tape, and Jay Prince is his guy. So it was like a real street dude gonna step out the middle and let the yo put put the family with. If Larry Hoover if Larry Hoover says, "Yo, I want Jay Prince to handle that," get out the way, nigga, and let him handle that. Why are you standing in the way of a of an official dude that's being able to come home? Oh, I'm protecting the lady. She's trying to extort. So I didn't like the way he was handling. Like that's why I, I said this in the last interview. That's why we stopped messing with each other. Now, when the thing happened with Quavo and everything, all of a sudden, everybody, no, hookers, they true mob ties. I'm, I'm like, man, I took an oath to one thing, man. Like, I, like I'm not, look, so what, I, what I did was separated myself from all negativity the same way I did him. My platform is not about none of this. I don't want no affiliation with none of this negativity. As a man, I'm telling the world that. Leave hocus out of all, why do you always want to involve me with some negativity? A chain gets snatched in New York. Why they tag me in there? I ain't got nothing to do with that. I go get the chain back. Now everybody, now everybody got something to say. Negative still. I try to create peace. Damn if you do, damn if you don't. I created peace. I tried to. And I think I did a good job because after that, it, everything simmered down. Like, I, like, I'm out here trying to, trying to change my life. And they want me in this gangster bubble so bad. Why? Yeah, yeah, let's talk about that. Because in the past, you've been able to maintain composure when whack went off on you, right? What was it different about it this time that had you firing back on that kind of level? Because listening to the audio, y'all both screaming at each other like on some real demon time. I've heard audio of you before with him and you were just kind of like, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to scream at you. I'm not going to, you know, go, go back and forth on the app. Was it that he just went too far this time? What was it? Yeah, he went too far, man. He, he's doxing my, my my baby mom, like I said, an innocent woman who had nothing to do with nothing in real time. He's doxing my address again in real time. He putting my kid's life in jeopardy. You know what I'm saying? Like he doxing my mom, say he gonna put a bag on my mom's head in real time. Like you don't play with no nigga. Like, like he, you know, and I, and I hold my composure because if I'm gonna do something to you, I ain't gonna tell you I'm gonna do it. So the FBI can hear me say it. And then when it happened to you, I go to jail. So I'll be holding my composure with him, but it just, you know, he I I he burst that bubble. He got the reaction that he wanted. I, I fell and for the I fell for the okie doke. Did you feel disappointed by that? That you allowed him to take you to that place? Yes, I did. I, I felt disappointed with myself afterwards, like then. You know what I mean? Like, you know, because I promised myself that I would, I would, I would, you know, I wouldn't let nobody get, especially him, get me like that. Like, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, I felt disappointed. I'm I could have handled myself a little better. You know, I shouldn't have yeah. let him. Yeah. During our last interview, I asked you the type of content you make is not even this hip hop drama stuff, but you've had issues with some major people like Wack, Charleston, Hassan, and I said, "Why do you think they would go after someone like you?" And you said, "It was a test. Like you've had this reputation as being a G and official, and they want to test you to see if you really changed." Right? Yeah. 
don't you don't you think though like that this whole situation has like got you out of your element yes. so much yeah i think it definitely got me out of my element um i uh just to just to prove a point i, I went a couple days on clubhouse and was and was going back and forth talking crazy you know missing money on youtube for that, like, yo, forget that. I want to be over here now. Like, yeah, just like poking my chest out. Um, I got plans. I got, a, I got, I got not only the for, for the love of Hocus show. I got multiple shows to do. I got a whole lot of stuff going on, and I'm not gonna say it stagnated any of that. But you know, I, that's where my focus need to be, and it took me off my focus for a couple of days. You know what I'm saying? But you're human, though. I mean, it's it's hard to to always be. In control, right? I mean, like sometimes people just push you too far, man. Yeah, yeah. At the end of the day, but like you said, like I said, it's a test. You're going to be tested, and it's not the test is really not from them. The test is from the universe. The test is from God within, right? Because I believe that we all are gods. But that's you know that's another topic, you know. So that's that God within me testing me. Do you really want this kid? Are you really ready for this? These blessings I'm about to give you. Well, let me see how you handle this. Is that something that you struggle with, like on a regular basis, like the way that you've been conditioned to be pretty much, you know, for such a large portion of your life growing up in the hood and being on that kind of time, you know, ready to go at any time and into like to be this more person that you've, you know, experience being in prison and wanting to change your life and, and, and finding spirituality and obviously growing up and maturing now, sometimes it's hard to escape that mentality. Is that something that you, you find hard to balance at times? Definitely something I find hard to balance with. Um, I put my, but I'm, I'm very vulnerable and, you know, I put my whole life out there already. So it's kind of like I struggle with it, but in the sense, and again, not really because like I'm already an open book. You know what I mean? So certain things don't really bother me. But when it comes to my family, I'm a definitely, you're going to have to kill me. Like, for real. Like, I, if it's over, it's over. But you're going to have to kill me playing with my family. You know what I'm saying? So I think that's any man. You know, right. my reaction could have still been more mature in a way. You know, I could have I could have just ignored it. I'm like, oh, no, nah, all right, so you want to play these games? Let's go. Like, I'm like, because I could get on ignorant time, too, because I'm fearless. I'm, I'm not scared of nothing. I'm not scared of nothing and nobody. The government, they couldn't take me down the first time. And you trying to help me take me down this time. You think I'm going to be worried about you? You think I'm scared of you? Because you got an address? Hey, yo, I beef with dudes. And Cal from Castle Hill Projects, our beef was across the street. We all knew each other apartments. Our mothers walked, go to the same supermarket. Across the street, we know where each other lived. You think I'm worried about you? Not even across the street, on the same side of this building and that building, same side of the projects. I had beef with dudes, the same side of the projects. We knew each other addresses. You think because you put my address out that I'm worried? He See, the problem with him is that he don't understand that he's dealing with a nigga who's crazier than him, but just suppressing it. This guy, this rabbit hole hocus that y'all see, the people that really know me don't even believe in this guy. They think this guy's a facade. They think I created this new facade and they see me and they laugh at me because they be like, yo, this thing a whole crazy. He over there and the rabbit. That's not the hocus that they know. He don't know. He don't really know. I haven't showed that hocus because I've been chilling. He's dealing with a nigga who's crazier than him and he don't understand that. And he now that he, he got a little taste of it by me putting that pressure back. And he don't know how to handle it. So he come up with fake lies, fake paperwork and all that type of shit. His best bet is to leave me alone. I think that's some good advice. I think, there. I think that if you, if it was just about you, if he, he just kept it about you, you wouldn't have had that reaction. But because it was I, made, yo, I wouldn't even said nothing back to him. I would have never put up another post, nothing like, but he knows that. Yeah. But when you touch somebody's family like that, that's when like, bro, like that's when you go berserk. You know what I mean? Cause that's something that you just don't do. Exactly. So one thing he did say was that K Slay is turning in his grave right now. If K Slay was alive, do you think things would be different between you and Wack? Let me tell you why they would. Because whether he would have respected it or not, 
I would have. K Slay would have called both of us and asked us both to chill that we disrespected him by doing this. He definitely would have called us. K Slay used to call me about every little thing. K Slay had his scopes on me. Any little thing that I do, period, outside of whack, K Slay would call me. Like, yeah, come on, Hope. You bugging. Like, all right, all right. You know, I took a lot of advice from K Slay, great mentor. K Slay would have 1 percent called both of us, like, yo, y'all niggas violating me right now. Like, come on, y'all gonna really do this? And you know what I would have said? I'm K Slay, I'm 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 done. I ain't gonna I got you, big bro. I don't think he would have respected it though, because I don't think he got respect for nobody. Hmm. So based off of what you're saying right now, do you think that this is disrespecting K Slay's memory? Because both of y'all were his brothers. Most definitely. We both shared the brother in K Slay and we met through K Slay. So this is definitely disrespectful. Wack called me crying when K Slay died. So, you know, I, I I don't I don't know how many people he called when K Slay died. And I don't I don't know how many people he called crying, even if he did call a lot of people. Wack called me crying when K Slay died, as he should, because that was his brother, right? So most definitely, this is disrespecting Case Slay. This is very disrespectful. And, and you know what? I'm glad you brought this to my attention because I'm I'm disrespecting too. So I gotta fall back. You know, I gotta that's maybe it's Case Slay speaking through you right now. Fall back, hope. You disrespecting me, bro. I mean, that that's crazy then. So then you have seen some humility in Wack then if he really called you crying like that then you've seen that he does care about somebody that there is a side of him that like that, that, that exists. I'm going to be honest with you. I think, I honestly think that he's, um, I don't want to say schizophrenic because when you schizophrenic, you don't remember the other part of you. Uh, bipolar, definitely bipolar narcissist. Uh, he jumps into different modes. Like I, I think that he has, uh, um, I'm not diagnosing anybody. This is my, my un, my unprofessional opinion is that, that, you know, he has some form of mental illness going on. Like, you know, he's definitely just, he's a, he's a, uh, he's a psychopath. He's, he's, he want to destroy everything in his path. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like, yeah, he got, yeah, he, 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 like he could have this side where he's crying, but then he got like, that shit could get off and he could go into a demon real quick. And then he have a side that he cool. Well, he just mad cool. And then he got this, this side where he just, he just evil again. Like it's, the guy is different people in one. So you don't think that it's it's a, a whole situation that he had like with Cuban where he was like, it's just entertainment. Like that's like his uh, mindset that he re- he really just doing it because it's, it's uh, entertaining for people to watch. I think to him it's personal with me because I didn't take his side with the Jay Prince thing. And he probably mm. felt that shit up. So he's been holding because every time, every time he talks about me, he brings that up. So obviously that right there, he still haven't let it go. Because we was remember I said last time we was cool, and then for all of a sudden, it's, I, like, that's why I told you so he so he a, he a psychopath. Like we was cool. He he apologized to me. Yo, I'm sorry for saying that about your mother. Hope you know what I mean. That was some fucked up shit that I did. I ain't gonna lie. That was some sucker shit. And then he started making rooms again without no no beef in the middle. Like in in between, there was nothing to happen. It just he just spazzed out again on me, started making room, running content on me. So, as yeah, he's a psychopath in there, man. So that leads me to my next question, because I was going to say, what did Hocus 4 Fifth do that is so bad that Wack would go out of his way to really come at you like this? I just told you, he that's, that is what it is, bro. It was a Jay Prince thing. He bring it up every time. Oh yeah, that's you know you should because he he said it. He said that I, I should have took his side. That you know I'm a millionaire too, Hokies. You know I was looking out for you. I was promoting you. I was so he felt like because he was doing all that, like you know, and um, I could have. Do you my take business. responsibility for that? That you think? Yeah, I did. And when I told him that, you know what, I should have minded my business, man. Like you know what, I should have. I, I never said he was right. I didn't. I didn't like the way he handled the situation. So him saying I said you right, he's lying. You know what I mean? But I could have minded my business. Yes. I could have totally just minded my business, but I chose not to. You know what I'm saying? And um, and now <laughs> here we are now. All because of that one thing. Like, he he can't let that go. Like, damn, bro. 
You know, like you used to call me your brother before this. Yo, you my brother. I fuck with Hope. I rock, yo, come out to LA. I rock with you. But whatever, right? And now all of a sudden, because I nah, you know what I'm saying? Like I like doxing me and all that. You hate me that much, bro? You put out nigga. You you not the only nigga with people that know how to dox. That's all I'm gonna say. I'm not even gonna say no more after that. So it's like I would never put out your your your, your people's address, your wife address, your daughter address. Hm. I would never put it out. I, I just would never do it, bro. Like, I just won't. Especially someone I once called a brother. I won't do it. I think that's a, a real dangerous game because, like, even if you didn't call for something, like, people got some real, like, crazy followers that might try to do something just for the the sake of it. You know what I mean? To be like, oh, I want to impress this person that I'm following. Like, oh, like, if I really rock with whack, I'm going to go do that because now I got that address. Well, I just, you know, I just want to um, inform everybody that I live in the state of Georgia. If you step foot on my property, I will be forced to defend myself. Swiss cheese, nigga. <laughs> so, Wack accused you of asking your followers for money that was supposed to be for the rabbit hole, but you used the money instead to pay your bills because your house is in foreclosure. See, Wack is the king at pulling up documents, right? Why don't he go get the foreclosure documents? Dude? <laughs> My house never been a foreclosure. I never lie. But Re- Reggie Wright said he don't lie, though. He said he don't lie. It's a never lie. And the money that I raised, right? This is why they mad, because I can raise money at will with my community. I raised $15,000 um, from just for my, my community alone, right? To, to, for my show, for the love of Hocus. And I, that I told you will be coming soon. So are you shooting it yourself? Yes, independently, you- shooting it myself, yeah. Okay. So I went, I definitely, um, I went through a lot, like in the last couple of months and, and was put on hold by, by other people. This is why I don't like depending on people because I had, you know, different networks, different production companies interested and people, you know, they get back to you too like late and it's like, at this point, it's just like, you know, we're doing our own thing. You know, that's it. It's coming soon. That's all I'm going to say. I don't you know, I don't want these dudes knowing what I'm doing, so I don't want to give too much info. Because, you know, wait, I'm wait, just, wait, you know wait. when I go back to Clubhouse, I'm going to still tell them that I threw the money in the strip club. But I just want to know, you you sending out casting calls for all the honeys? Or like, you know, what, how, how's that working? Well, I, I definitely, yes, I sent out casting calls months ago. A lot of, a lot of women answered. Um, so, you know, there's still there's still room, ladies. There's still room to be a part of the show. If you want to hit me up, hocus four fifth rabbit hole at gmail.com. That's hocus four five th rabbit hole at gmail.com. And let me know if you want to be a part of the show, ladies. Okay, so are we allowing are you you know taking on all types of women? Like, you know, or are you big tall, big, tall, small, green, yellow, purple. Everybody, you don't discriminate. Yeah, I'm, I'm going for the heart. I'm not going for the um the baddie. Okay, because you know sometimes it's like, it's like sometimes the people are very particular about who they willing to choose to be their mate. Like as far as like ethnicity, race, like all that type of stuff. So you saying like everybody's welcome. Everybody's welcome. Heart and mind, man. That's what gotcha. I, you know. I, I, it's gonna be. I, I, I'm gonna test your heart and I'm gonna test your mind. Just know that. So. Rotund ones, you know what I mean? Thin ones. I like big girls. I like big girls. Which leads me to my next question. Let's talk about Lizzo. Hey, because you had some harsh criticism for Lizzo not too long ago, saying she's not attractive, she's she needs to lose some weight, and you're positive that she's guilty over the claims from the backup dancers, right? What made you want to come out and say that? And what makes you so sure that she's guilty of that? Well, I'm not. Of course, I'm not. I'm not part of the camp, so I'm not so sure that Lizzo is guilty. I just don't like this leftist leaning agenda. Uh, you know, um, putting um, um, let's be real, obese women in our face, saying this is the new sexy when it, when it's really not. Let's be let's be honest. Let's tell Lizzo that she needs to lose weight, that she's a cheeseburger away from a heart attack, and that's not cool. You know, what I'm saying I'm not being disrespectful. I used to be obese. You know what I mean? I went and got in the gym, lost a lot of weight. I'm fit now, you know what I mean. So, you know, it's it's just it's just 
you know, they pushing this in our face. Like, you know, like it's not, that's not healthy living. It's not sexy living. We have to be honest with ourselves. I mean, she might be sexy to somebody, but she's not to me. And and I can't, I gotta be canceled for saying that. I can't say that Lizzo is not sexy to me or can't have an opinion. And I, and, and you know, um, we all know people, right? And this is not the first time that I heard that Lizzo has a really terrible attitude. Like they say her attitude is so bad. She treat people like shit. And now it's just now these people are coming out. So, you know, I, I think these people, you know, these industry people sometimes do get too big for their bridges and get in. And she, I think she, um, you know, got what she deserved, like right now. Like, you know, you shouldn't be treating people like that. So what is the agenda being pushed? Like, why do you think that um, obese people like that are being pushed? I mean, you know, it's, to me, it's like promoting an unhealthy lifestyle. Um, you know, <laughs> there's plenty of, you want to go down that rabbit hole? You want to go down this rabbit hole? There's a lot of agendas being pushed at once all at the same time. But with that one, it's, it's that's like pushing an unhealthy lifestyle. That that type of lifestyle, that type of look, that you, you could tell, like you on the verge, this is not me even talking about her. But when you that big, you definitely, either you got diabetes or you're on your verge of being diabetic. You know, um, obese people are more likely to have, you know, develop cancers and tumors and just become more sick. And then what does that make? That makes more money for the pharmaceutical companies. So it's just not, it's, it's no, that's not sexy. Let's, let's promote good health. Let's promote her in a gym trying to lose that weight. You know what I'm saying? That's sexy. Her, even if she, even if it takes her five years to lose it, even her trying to lose it, that's sexy to me. Her trying to be healthier, that's sexy to me. But flaunting that, that, that fucking jiggly puff around and throwing it around like, you this it's not it's not to me it's not you know promoting a healthy lifestyle is sexy to me do you ever think that people are industry plants like that like oh like this is the next thing that we going to push uh and then they pick the person of course she's an industry <laughs> plant little Nas X is an industry plant Right, right. Like it, it makes you want to think about it sometimes. It's like these Six Nine was an industry plan. Come on, man. So it's you think it's to to uh inspire people to follow the same way of accepting, like, oh, it's okay if I'm fat, or you think it's more of a distraction? Like, what do you think is like it is? Um I what they what they would say is that it's um, you know giving boosting the big woman confidence that's what they would say i would say it's pushing an unhealthy lifestyle like i said from the beginning it's, yeah because did you see uh Ari spears talk about it you, i know you you have to see that right because Ari spears uh in an interview he said that she looks like the shit emoji and so yeah, yeah he got a lot of shit for that like literally like everybody was killing him in the comments saying that how could you do that? And, and you know, because we in a, a era of women empowerment and to another level, to, to another level. And his, his whole thing was like, everything is slay, queen, slay, slay. You know, when it's like, if you really care about somebody like that, you would be trying to help them be healthy and live a, a better lifestyle. You know, so when I saw that you did that, it kind of reminded me of that situation. Because a lot of people are afraid to say something in this era of political correctness. They're afraid to get canceled and everything. So when you said something, I was like, this is kind of refreshing that somebody's willing to speak their mind. Yeah, and I, I definitely agree, man. I think that, um, you know, uh, like I said, bro, it's that they pushing an the unhealthy agenda, man. And and, and if, like you said, if, you, if you're a friend, if you really care for her, you would be honest with her. Like the world should be honest with her and just say that, you know, it's not, it's not, well, maybe some, like I said, some people probably do be, think it's sexy, but we got to be real. A lot of people being fake because they don't want to be canceled. This is a cancel culture um, era right now. You know what I mean? So like, I'm not afraid to speak my opinions. I, I have a, a, you know, a platform that I go live every night where I talk my opinions. And so I'm not afraid to being canceled. I got my core audience already. Yeah, because I know in the past that she's kind of said things like, oh, don't be mad just because you can't get in between the cheeks and, like, you know, different yeah, stuff. Yeah, you like can't that. get in between it because you can't find that shit. You can't find the fucking cooch. That's another thing that you 
you you went crazy. You were saying like, oh, she was used to uh, getting this type of dick from so and so, and they had to lift up their bellies and stuff. You went crazy in what you said. I probably had a couple drinks. <laughs> I was like, oh, because don't act like you don't remember that. <laughs> I probably had a couple of drinks. Yeah, shout out to Lizzo though. I don't hate the woman, man. I, I just, you know, like um, some of it, yeah, it, it could be dry comedy at sometimes too because you got to put some comedic value in there these days because you know everybody take everything so serious. This is the these people are so sensitive. Like it's just crazy. Well, if you were like just like serious and then that was it, like people less likely would watch it and get the message that you're trying to send. So you have to kind of try to make it a little entertaining. At the same time, right? I'm an entertainer. Yeah, that's yeah. Um, so I saw a video of you and Hassan talking. Um, I think like a month ago about my bro China Mac. Um, Hassan was saying that he hates China Mac, and uh, Minnesota was talking about China and the U.S. having issues. And you said China Mac got nothing to do with that. I know you got a relationship with China Mac too. Um, what was the the whole situation with that? I, that it was just funny to me because they was basically like hitting, hitting that and insinuating that China Mac could be a, 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 a like a agent, a spy for 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 China. And I'm like, like the way they were saying, I'm like, yo, bro, you mean that China Mac went and sat down with Xi Jinping and I over here in the hip hop community spying for China? I, it was just, yo, I, it was funny to me. It was hilarious. I'm like, come on, bro, yo, China Mac, the bro, China Mac is just out there creating content finding his way like the rest of us you know what i'm saying he not so he's not doing no demon work like he's not out there causing problems though i can see if he was causing contention problems starting beefs putting people against each other he's not doing none of that he's just running around having fun with um what's the other um crit mac he having fun with this person like he just he just getting up with people having fun i don't see nothing wrong with what china mac doing i don't (laughs) yeah if anything he's trying to bridge the gap between the two different communities because I've seen him like have conversations with each side of, you know, and, and we know that there's been tension between the, the different minority communities, you know, so it seems like really more he's trying to build a understanding between the people because uh, growing up in, in, in uh, hip hop, it's like, obviously it's, it's a more black culture, right? African-American culture. Um, but when, if you're raised in that kind of culture, but yeah, like, what are your thoughts about that? About you know, other people of other races growing up within the culture of hip hop. I think it's dope. I, I think that um, you know, anytime you create something that spreads globally like that, we should honor that. We should be happy. We should be grateful. You know, as long as they give us our flowers, I think um, you know, they need to start giving the Bronx a little more flowers than they do around this planet. We need a little more flowers because we created this this beautiful culture in our borough. And um, I feel like a lot of times, instead of giving us our flowers, they, they'll say, oh, we did it better. Atlanta will say, we did it better. The West Coast will say, we did it better. Like, you know, I ain't do nothing better. Like, you know what I mean? We started this. Right. You know? So, you know, but but I love it, though. I love that other cultures is, you know, supporting hip hop. It just, it, just, it just shows you how powerful we are. You know, we really... It shows, you know, we really run this shit if we really put our minds together. For real. I think so too, man. I think that hip hop has become what pop culture is. Like it's the number one culture, right? You see it everywhere. You see it commercials. It's the number one genre. Like if you, even if you pull up in the the, the biggest suburbs, the kids is listening to hip hop, bro. You know what I mean? It's like they are, you know, even if they can't truly relate to whatever the hood experiences, that's what they listen into, you know, it's being consumed in that way. Um, I just think that, like you said, uh, more respect needs to be put towards the people that created it. So for me, my opinion is just more like, don't consume a culture that you don't care about the people that created the culture. Right. You know, so, um, but do you, do you think that, I, I guess you you don't share the same sentiments as like Hassan does, where it's like, uh, you know, China Mac is going around and, and um, trying to get in the middle of all these different gangs and everything, right? Um, no, I, I don't. I don't see 
And, you know, I don't see him, like, if he was out there causing problems, like I said, drama, and China Mac was in a lot of beefs, then I would be like, yeah, he is doing, but he's not doing that. He's just making friends and he's creating content. That's what I see him doing. You know what I mean? Right. Now, um, yeah, other than that, how, how's that, how's it just funny, though? <laughs> what he was saying, he said, yo, all these Chinese people, he could be like Bruce Lee. He got, he got Jet Lee. He got Jackie Towers crying. <laughs> that was funny. I'll go fuck. That was funny. What? But you know, yeah, but it, that's like if you were to grow up in, in in China or something like that, and you're you know you're you're watching them on TV, then that's like more relatable. But to grow up in America, right? Like, and and this goes for like any any race. You know, what I'm saying it's like same thing where um, the first time you saw Pun, you saw Joe on TV, and they was representation for you, right? For for uh. For somebody that is growing up in the Bronx that is Puerto Rican or Latino and stuff, and you ain't never seen that before, you're like, wow, now we got somebody that is putting on for us. You know, so I, I think that um, it's, it's harder to relate to something when you're growing up in a country where that doesn't speak to you like a, like a Jet Li, you, you know, you, you're American. You might be Chinese, but you're, you know, you're American at the end of the day. So that, that person doesn't speak to you in that same way. Yeah, um, I it, but you know, like we said, though, hip hop is still the number one culture. So even if I grew up in China, I think I would still love hip hop. You know, so I right. get what you're saying. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying, though. I, I could I could definitely agree with that. I could just say I agree with you. So do you do? You, what about the the whole conversation about being a guest in hip hop? Is that something that that you believe in? Because because you're a different race. Not yeah. really, man. I, I I can't say that. It's a culture. Like, it's not. It's not a. It's not being a guest. No, it's not a guest. It's a culture, and and anybody can be a part of a culture. You know, anybody can choose to be a part of what culture they want to be a part of. So I want to say that they, he's a guest in hip hop. Or white people would be a guest in hip hop. I would just like I said. I would just appreciate the, um the respect. And you know, and the flowers for the for the creators of hip hop, you know, for the for the place that created hip hop, you know. I agree, man. I think that um, there's a level of sensitivity when it comes to um, anything that is created uh, by blacks or, or or Browns because you know it's been stripped, it's been stolen from, the, uh, from them, and so like it's a. Uh, when you see another culture come to participate in everything, is there's kind of always that stigma like, oh, y'all trying to take it away from me. But not everybody has that intention, but I understand why you would feel that way. You know, um, I think that it's important as long as you come into the genre, to the culture with respect and you pay homage to those that came before you that made it possible for you to even um, be a part of it. Right. Yeah. I, I agree. Like, like I just said, man, Um, I think that, you know, you know, like you said, it's been stolen. Like everything was stolen from like we started jazz. Right. Right. We started rock, rock, and rock and roll. Yeah. yeah. And like, people won't, don't probably don't even know that even country music. Like you would think, you know what I'm saying? And it's crazy because it, I feel like they're attempting to steal hip hop because allegedly the record label said that they're not signing any more rappers. They're only going to focus on Latino artists and Afrobeat type music, like African right. artists. So, you know, it's it's like, wait a minute, what's going on here? I mean, but in this day and age, we don't need the record labels. This might they might help us. So, you know, they might help us become more independent and we get let us get back hip hop. We will take it. Yeah, you know, I think that um, when you stereotypically think of rock and roll these days, right? You kind of think of like a blonde hair guy with a guitar and just like really like long hair and just rocking out, right? And so I never want to see the day where the stereotypical image of hip hop, the face of hip hop is anything but a black person. Because I feel like then you're stealing away those that really created. I think that hip hop is great that anybody could come participate, but at the forefront should always be the people that made it. You know, you know, I agree with you with that. And um, so when you now to go back to your question about the guest, I can understand why you asked that because I agree with that statement. Yeah, yeah, it's probably kind of our guest in hip hop because you could you you can never put another face in in front of that you know 
as the, as the creators. And like, you know, if there was a logo for hip hop, it would have to be a black man or, or Puerto Rican. Right, right. Or, or like black NBA and Puerto Rican logo. together. Like, right. Yeah. yeah. And then so I think that um, that's why people get mad about like the whole Eminem situation where um, he invited a lot of people to come into the culture to be fans of hip hop that were not fans of hip hop prior to him that don't know the history uh, prior to him, right? And for people to not have the education or the credentials to really speak on the genre they weren't familiar with prior to him to say, oh, he's the best because it's kind of like, because he speaks to me, you know what I mean? And so I think that that's what uh, drives a lot of people mad and uh, sensitive to the situation of allowing other cultures to come and, and partake. Yeah, I, I, I agree. That. I agree because you can't. <laughs> Eminem is fire. Like I even put Eminem in my top five as far as lyric lyricists go. But yeah, um, no, no, he has the he has the credentials. But I think that when it comes to him, I think people are more mad about the fans and the narratives that the fans push because it's not really coming from him. You know, it's not really he's yeah. And so I think that that negative stigma gets pushed onto him. A lot of times because of it coming from the fans. Um, and I've seen even like Benzino say this too, you know. Yeah. What did you uh what did you think about the whole situation with um Melly Mel and Eminem? I mean, real true, I didn't give it too much attention. I don't even know what happened other than they was beefing. And um, yeah, that's <laughs> it. I don't I don't know. I I, I see Melly Mel Eminem beefing. I said I'm not even gonna look at this. <laughs> so I don't I don't know nothing about it. I don't know why they was beefing. I don't I have no idea. I didn't so get that the, one any energy. Yeah, the situation with Melly Mel was that um, over the years he's made like he's done interviews and he he said some things like, "Oh, I could beat Eminem so easily in a battle; it'd be the easiest thing I've ever did." Right, and then uh, he did another interview where he said, "These people making these top five, uh, top top rapper lists, right, of all times, um, you got to put Eminem in there because he's white." That's the only reason, basically alluding to the fact that the only reason why he's in there is because he's white. And um, it was it was the way that he said it, the tone of it, you know. And so because Eminem has said similar things before about how his race has played a, a role into he put it you know, in the song, his, in white America. He said, if I was black, I would have so half. Like, right, right. And then um, and so I think it was just the way that Melly Mel had said it. And then Eminem uh, did a song with uh, his new artist, Easy Mill, and he had said he had uh, take sh taken shots at Melly Mel, calling him a juice head and everything. And um, Melly Mel came with his response, and uh, it was uh, disappointing to a lot of people. Um, and then he had issued an apology, but then he took down the apology and everything because I think Eminem fans are just so crazy, so they was really on his neck. <laughs> at him, so Mel probably poked his chest out like, man, man I'm Diesel. I beat all y'all niggas right. up. <laughs> right, right. So I think that uh, you know a lot of the videos I made about it, and um, me and Cuban have have our Lincoln Panda show, and we talked about it too. And I, I said basically that Eminem cannot win in that situation, not from a battle perspective, but as far as a narrative perspective, because. Melly Mel is a forefather in hip hop and he cares about what Melly Mel thinks about what purist fans think people, his peers think. Right. And it's frowned upon for him to diss somebody that is of that level, that status that Melly Mel is, especially because he's white and he's viewed as a guest in hip hop. Now, if somebody else did like method man or something, it wouldn't be as critical, but because it's Eminem, and the narrative that exists around him, it was it was a bad look. You know what I mean? Because Melly Mel over the years has said a lot of things about people, um, that artists that came after him, Jay-Z, Method Man, you know, like all these people, and they've never dissed him. They just kind of expressed the disappointment. Right, because he's a legend, a forefather of hip hop. So it's kind of like you... you it's kind of like you let grandpa just, all right, grandpa, man. I love, like, you know, you're, you're real grandpa. Well, you're you beefing right, with your right, real right. grandpa. You're like, all right, grandpa, go ahead, man. You know, you kind of got to leave that alone. You just got to gotta take it. But I understand why he felt the need to say something. But at the same time, it's just like I knew how critical people were going to be, people that don't like him already because he's white. 
And they was going to run with that. Like, oh, you see now he dissed one of our, our, our forefathers, you know? He's so disrespectful. <laughs> yeah. um, so recently you had come out and showed Hassan Campbell support, right? And you stand with him against B- uh, Bambada and uh, those opposing him in hip hop. What made you want to come out and say that? I mean, because you, I never knew that um, KRS One said that. Did you hear what KRS One said? Right, he called him a, a fed. No, he said he said that. Yo, if you got a problem with Ben Bada, then get out of hip hop. Like he's, you know, he he said Ben Bada got to be protected. Our yet yeah, our leaders is untouchable. Right. Ben Bada should be untouchable. I look. Let me tell you this, right? I know people from my projects that that you know I will never put name. Well, we we already know B Stinger is from my project. Like, you know what I mean? I know him. And he then came out and said, and Ben Bada molested him. And there's, there's other people, and I will never, they got to tell their own story. That this been a thing. Like, if you're from the Bronx, you heard this. That's what I'm saying. Like, everybody just get mad at Haas because this is aggressiveness. But he's not lying. If you're from the Bronx, you heard this. So when I heard KRS one said that, I said, nah, that's, I don't, I don't, nah. If this dude was playing with little boys, no, 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 not if. He was playing with little boys, and you saying, well, if you got a problem with Ben Bada, you got you should leave hip hop. No, I got a problem with Ben Bada, and I'm not leaving hip hop. KRS One, so now what? Come on, yeah, because even nah. Pierre came out and said something. Yeah, P- and even Melly Mel said something too. Speaking of Melly Mel, recently he right. said he came out and said that yeah, he everybody always knew. Peter Gunn said everybody always knew. So like we always heard this growing up in the Bronx. So this is not nothing new. So now it's Ben Bada turn, like you know how it was. Um, Brother Polite turn. Uh, Rashad Jamal and these other people, you know, it's been by the turn. It's, it's time for put the, you know, you got to pay for what you did. What do you think is the motive of KRS coming out and saying that? Do you think that because it, it will add a negative stigma to hip hop as a whole because of one of the people that helped create it uh, did something like that that was foul? I, I can't tell you his motive. I, I, I I, I think there's friendship there, there's respect, and and also what you said as far as like you know, one of the the, the Godfather, of, one of the Godfathers of hip hop, one of the forefathers, being you know that he he probably think it would happen. I don't know, I don't know, bro. I just I just know he wrong. Like I just know Kara S one is wrong and Ben Bot is wrong. Like for that, I can't so tell you what, what's going on in his mind. I don't know. How are you? How do you feel about watching? the Hassan situation from the side and seeing how people talk about him, how people treat him despite, you know, the situation with Bambada and, and how he, he was a kid when that, that type of stuff happened. Like they blame him. I, I think it's, I think it's whack. Um, because you know, they just don't like him. So they're never going to. And it's because he, you know, he took pictures with him when he was older. You know, that doesn't mean that, you know, how many people got, you know, got molested and didn't grew or still grew with these people and got pictures when they older. That doesn't mean he didn't molest them when he was a child. So I, I you know, I, um, I do sympathize with it because it happens, you know, and it's, and it's people, polite yesterday just copped out to seven years play guilty to doing that like people don't believe that these people are capable of this stuff but they are and they fall in love with their uh like peter gunn said their heroes the mythicism of like oh no way that's been about it no way he could do that not the legendary yes the legendary africa bambada was playing with little boys and Hassan campbell was one of them you know and he's telling his truth i believe him it's that's it I believe him. Why? Why he didn't do it to him, but he did to all these other people? Come on, man! Like, you know, anything else? Even if he was right, they they, they keep saying that. Oh, oh, he was fifteen when it started. Haas, Haas didn't say. Haas said I was fifteen when it ended, but they keep saying he was fifteen. Yeah, when I was fifteen, I was in the streets. I was already like outside. But a fifteen-year-old boy is still a child. And still, even if it started at fifteen, still a child. I don't care if he was outside already killing people. Still a child. These people discuss me sometimes. Yeah, when I uh, when I interviewed Hassan, you know, I told him that, you know, there must be some feelings of conflict because even though um, 
Bambata allegedly did that to him, right? At the same time, Bambata was there for him in other ways and helped raise him. So it's like you're looking at this person that did good things for you, but at the same time, they did terrible things to you. Um, and I, I think that it's it's really hard for people to take people off of pedestals because like you said, it's like, oh, they're a celebrity, so their status makes it so people view like they can't make mistakes in life. Man, wrote a clip. So you would, I mean, that has to be like some feelings of confliction there, right? Like you have to be conflicted because while he did those things to you at the same time, you're saying that he raised you. So he took care of you to a certain extent, right? When I was going through troubles with my mother and found myself in the streets, I had somewhere to stay and that was his house. Point blank period. But I'm gonna tell you right now, you keep on digging into him, you're not gonna get no views on your on your on on your video because don't nobody care. They don't care. And you need to understand that they don't care. You see me go through a situation just you know with, with the KRS one, right? Right. Because some of my friends was posting up KRS one. And um everybody know that KRS one put the audio out with the video out with himself saying that Bam has to be unfallible. And called me an FBI agent. And hip hop is going to support who, who? Some people felt divided. Now, years later, the, the 50th year anniversary come around, and it's like, you know, people show they didn't care. People that I know that's supposed to be cool with me. They know about what happened, they don't care. So it's like a way, it's a waste of time. Exactly. You know, people do make mistakes, man. And um you know, I'm I, I'm I'm with Haas on this. Um, I want to see Bambada get what he deserves, you know, for what he did to all the all the little boys, not just Haas. You know, so I'm I'm with him on this one. Like, yeah, Bambada need to pay. You know, everybody everybody knows he did what he did, and he needs to pay. We need to see Bambada go to jail. And it's, it's going to sound crazy coming from a dude like me, but I believe that this jail is made for people like Bambada, people that m molest children, plain and simple. And that's it. What do you think about the situation between Haas and Fat Joe? Um, I don't like it. I don't like Bronx people beefing. I actually call Haas and try to squash it. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, Haas was with it, but Haas, you know, he feels some type of way. You know, he has a platform and that's how he vent out and get his, things off of his chest. I don't like it. I don't like the fact that uh, you know, Bronx brothers going at it. I you know, we I don't like I don't like no black men going at it, right? Or black our black and brown brothers, right? Um, but especially our borough, you know, we all, we all know, know each other or, oh, we know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody like we all six close degrees. to each other. Yeah. That six degree of separation is real. Like we all got like, has got people that rock with Joe that's has peoples. So mm -hmm. like, I got people that rock with Joe that's just peoples. Like we all got peoples that rock with each other. We don't need to be beefing, man. And this is what I try to push. This is the message I'm pushing out there. Not this dumb shit whack with, with, with whack, like for real. So, you know, I don't like it. And I and I hope that it could be reconciled. Like, I hope that, that you know, you know, Fat Joe's not saying that. You know, we'll, we'll see how this thing go. I don't think it's going to go crazy, but I just don't like it, bro. That's my opinion on it. I don't like it. Because during our interview, Hassan said that Joe had his manager reach out to you directly was that to help dead the beef or well yeah I, I did shout the rich player you know what i mean that's my bro i speaks to rich player he joe didn't have him reach out to me it's not like that no joe mm, okay. i speak to rich player on a regular anyway like you know what i mean so like this that's this typical phone call like we chatting about what's going on right and um and this conversation came up and they know I and, and they know I got a relationship with Haas. Rich know that I'm like, yo, I'm gonna talk to Haas because yeah, I don't I don't think he should be on there, you know, slandering Joe or 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 dissing him because you know I don't I, I told Haas this too, even off the off the scene. I obviously, right? On and off. Like I, I say this on live like this, and I told him behind the scenes, like yo, Haas, man, like, you know, even with my son, I was like, yo, bro, Bronx niggas like man, that's like, Let's show the world we don't need to be dissing each other, bro. You know what I mean? I learned my own lesson when it came to that back in the day when we dissed Joe. And it just, to me, it just, it didn't get us nowhere. It's like, I don't know, bro. I'm just, I just think differently. I'm just more of a, a more humble person. 
who feel like we could do things, we could create greater things together than, than separate, you know? And we can show, we could we could really show the youth how grown men, like, handle things. Like, because because the youth that's wild and they grown men. I mean, once you, at 21, you know, you outside of 18, 19, 20, you grown men. So let's show them how grown men handle business. And this is not how grown men handle business. Even, you know, even show me and whack. Grown men, we don't handle business like this internet shit. You know, I'm getting caught up in the web right now. And I and I could take accountability for that. So, you know, I, I wish to, to see Haas and um and Joe reconcile that shit and, and, and let's move forward. But don't you think that Hassan got a, a a right to be mad because he said that Joe was responsible for demonetizing his page and cost him like a hundred thousand dollars? Well, I'm gonna say this. There's there's no there's no proof that Joe did that. Joe didn't claim that he did that. Whack 100 is actually one who took <laughs> who took credit for it. <laughs> you know, Whack 100 said he got Hassan Campbell clip demonetized. So, uh, you know, did, Joe didn't say I got you demonetized. Well, well, to be fair, do you think Joe would really say that though? Would he he really admit to that? <laughs> I mean, but, but my point is, though, like, if there's no evidence that he really did it, though, it's still an right. assumption, assumption. You know what I mean? It's still an assumption. Like, until until we know he did it for real, it's still an assumption. So, you know, I mean, look, anybody got 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 a um, anybody got a reason to be mad at anybody for whatever reason they want to be mad at somebody. I just want to see peace. That's what I'm gonna promote: right. peace between my brothers, man. Shout out to Fat Joe. Shout out to Rich Player. Shout out to Hassan Campbell. I'm promoting peace. I'm not. I'm not promoting nothing, nothing other than peace. I'm not promoting them beefing. I'm not promoting their back and forth. I'm promoting peace between them. I want to see them make peace. Do you know the legendary T.A.? No. I know him from Instagram. I never met T.A. Um, face to face. Okay, so you don't know him from around the way from being in the Bronx or anything like that? Nah, I know of him. I don't know. I never met him. But you've seen him with Joe in the past and everything? Yeah. Like I seen him on tour with Joe and shit like that, yeah. Like watching Instagram and shit, yeah. Right. What do you What do you think about their situation? The same thing that they brothers and they need to make peace, and that and that the um. Now I don't think Ta should be you know um, he made guys reasons. You ask me my opinion, you know the way he's putting right. it out there, especially especially about his family, like what you know, because that's what whack doing and me putting stuff about my family. But Ta is close to Joe, so it's more believable, right? Man, wrote a clip. So why did Joe want you to live with him? Because I'm sure, like the narrative now, the narrative now is that he did you a favor, and that's why the whole couch surfer thing came about. Joe's a fraud, man. He's a liar. I was writing his shit. At them times I was living with Joe, but those times I was writing those albums. That was during the time when times the albums was coming out. And I was his young gunner. I was getting the girls for him. I was getting all the girls for him. We was having fun. I ain't gonna lie. It was, it was, it was, it was crazy. Like the story is wild. Very wild. So yeah, I was getting the Joe, the girls for you, Joe. You ain't the perfect husband, Joe. Stop it. How many marriages you messed up? How many relationships you messed up? Joe, is it really love? She love you for you? Because I know a lot, bro. I'm the real book of Jose. You did this, Joe. So, um, mm -hmm. I, I, I de so, so T.A. was whack brother. I mean, pardon me. T.A. was Joe's Joe brother. brother. So, you know, that means T.A., was uh Joe wife was TA's sister, right? It had to be, right? That I mean TA is like a uncle to Joe kids. So anything with the family, the wife and the and the cheating and anything to break up a family, I think, you know, my personal opinion is that should be left out of everything. Now, you know, but this is, you know, I don't know their business. So I don't want to talk about that because I right. don't know. And I'm gonna mind my business. I told TA I'm gonna mind my business. I'm minding my business. I want to see peace. Yeah, that's right, that's what that's I right. want to see. On the live, I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah, I want to see peace between them too. That's it. All I'm promoting is peace. I want to see peace between them. They they are brothers. You know what I mean? They, they need to, you know, I want to see peace. But don't you think that at this point, it's kind of gone too far for them to ever reconcile that with like what's been said? No, no. I mean, words, it's words, man. Like you can reconcile words. I learned that, man. You can reconcile words. It could be the the 
worst words in the world is words, man. You know, sometimes, sometimes I can understand everybody don't think like me. So I can understand some people like, nah, they took it too far. I got to respect that. But you asked me and I said, no, mm -hmm. because it's only words. So if it's only words, can we see a, a possible reunion between you and somebody else we know? There's nothing outside of the scope of reality right now, tomorrow. No, until we fight. Now, if we fight, if he accept the fight and he could keep all the money, we could go out. We could go party at the bar after that. I don't care if he beat me up. I, we could go party after that. I just want to fight you. And after that, not, we could go party together like brothers, nigga. That's how I that's give not it who, up. Hmm? That's not who I'm talking about. I'm talking about your other Bronx brother. <laughs> I love Cuban, man. I ain't got no problem. That's my brother. I ain't got no problem with Cuban, man. I love Cuban, man. Cuban know that shit, man. I ain't got I ain't got no problem with Cuban, man. It's, it's you know, I, I I again I got caught in the trick bag. I I watched the interview and I got angry at the things I let, you know what I mean, that he said. And being that he said those things publicly, I wanted to say some things publicly back. You know what I mean? Because I didn't agree with what he was saying. I didn't agree and I didn't like it. So, you know, but at the end of the day, issues with you, I would, I would never have a problem with Cuban. Like, never. Like, a real man, issue. I, I love both of y'all, man. And, and, and that was real disappointing to see happen because it happened on my platform. It started there, right? Because you and I had that interview. And then he, he went and said what he did and everything. And I told him I didn't agree with him saying those things. Um, but then, like, you took it a little personal, bro. Like with what you said about him, you know what I mean? Involving Joe and stuff. And, and, and so he got a little out of hand. What did that. I say? I said, what did I say other than, yo, get back to the music. We don't want to hear that, sh that, sh that shit about Joe. No, we don't. We want to hear, I like, I like him right now with the Prince of Pain. Come on, do a reality show. People want to see right. you on TV. People want to see you making music. You know what I'm saying? Cuban is a character. Everybody know that. Cuban got talent. Everybody know that. Nigga, give us the give us the talent. Give us the content. I'm giving y'all content every night, and I'm in a rabbit hole. And then I'm also entertaining too. You know what I mean? I make I do it in my way. People want to see content from me. They don't want to see me beefing with Wack. They don't want to see me beefing with Cuban. I know what my people want from me, and I give it to them. Right. So all but, that's what I'm saying about Cuban. Give us the content, bro. I ain't say nothing wrong, bro. But, but what a brother would tell another brother. That's why I feel. Hocus, some of those things that you were bringing in Joe with, though. Come on, Hocus. The the interview clip from from uh, uh, Drink Champs and stuff. You, bro, come on, bro. <laughs> Listen, this is the internet. If you, if you want to play internet war games, then I'm going to play internet war games. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you want to say this? Okay, I'm going to say that. Like, it's the internet. This is like, it, it's not that serious, though. I, to me, I don't take it. Content is not that serious. Now, it's only serious when you start putting out nigga addresses and shit like that. Now we got a problem. But if we go, you know, go back and forth on the internet, I learned, I learned the internet. This is how niggas play. Oh, okay, all right, just, all right. They take this piece of content, they chop it up, they make it look like y'all brothers. That you guys should have just got on the I, phone. I just told man. you that we brothers. I ain't got no issue with them. I ain't got no issue I, with them. I know you don't got, but I'm saying that you guys should have just got on the phone because it, it was, it was a real bad look. And I know that in the end, you did, you did say sorry for your part and everything, and that, and that was good though. I just hope that you guys can eventually get on the horn and and really, you know mend things out because just like you said like you said that you wanted to have a bang bang boogie reunion like i think so many of us would like to see that man well let's see if it's possible i i, I, I would love it i just for just the, for the music part aspect and for them to, to really see that's want to be home next year too so to, for them right. to really see us five make a real album of what we could have been 15 years ago? Because I know we can make a dope-ass album together. All no doubt. feelings, emotional side, so everybody had any emotion towards each other. I will put all that aside to create a Bang Bang Boogie album. Because I know we will have a classic album that will go platinum. I think it will go platinum, even today. I think it's hard when you, when you have a relationship with somebody for so long because there's a lot of nuances and little things that happen that people feel how they do and they might not always vocalize it and they keep it inside and let it boil. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, you know, um, I'm glad we got things off our chest, so I ain't got no problems with them. You know, we both got, yeah. I guess, how we felt off our chest through you. So, you know, thank you. And 
You know, I ain't got no problem. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll see a Bang Bang Boogie album in the future. I'm just know I'm I'm saying it live on Pan the Chop that if you was to ask five five of us to raise our hand, would they do an album? My hand is raised. I don't know how about S1, my son, and Lord Tariq and Cuban. Even though S my brother, he might be like, no, I don't want to do it. I don't know. I don't know. I never asked him. So we'll see. Let's. Mm -hmm. All right, man. Hocus, I appreciate you, bro. I know you got to go. Uh, it's always a pleasure to talk to you, man. I know we got through a lot of things. So I appreciate your time, man. All right, Brody. You're ready. Anytime. Mm -hmm.